In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a woven fractal sphere on a woven background using Apophysis. The first step is to launch Apophysis. I'm using version 7x. The next step is to go File, New. To get a suitably tiled background, choose the Square Tile option. It's not going to be square for very long because the first step is to change it so that the dimensions are suitable for a wallpaper. I usually edit so that my dimensions, when rendered, will fit a 1600 by 1080 screen. Half of that is 800 by 540, and that's normally sufficient, but because I'm screencasting and you can't see the whole thing, I'm going to make it slightly smaller. The next thing I'd like to do is calculate my colour values. If the colours are particularly boring, now might be a good time to change it to something more interesting. Don't get too hung up on the colours at this stage because it's likely that we're going to change them later on. To get a nice textured background, we need to edit the transforms. The first transform that we're going to change is the middle one, or in this case transform 5. Go into the Variations tab and scroll down or up until you can find the blue transform. As expected, this has got a value of 0.5. Double click to zero it and you'll notice that the fractal pretty much disappears. We can replace it with Linear, which doesn't do much, or Spherical, which looks somewhat better. You'll need to play to find a variable that suits you. I'm going to go with a diamond variation and I'm then going to decrease the size of my transform. I can watch the preview window to see what it will look like. It's also a good idea to play with the weights a little bit. Notice that if we decrease the weight of the middle transform, our colour fills in quite nicely. You can of course keep playing until you see something really spectacular, but I'm going to leave it at this. The next step is to generate the sphere. To do that, you want to grab a final transform and create a bubble. At this point, you can't see any sphere at all, and that's because the sphere is quite large. No, it's not. It's because I've got a transform of one stuck on there. That's better. By resizing, the final transform you can get a number of interesting effects. A small transform is going to give you a tightly woven design whereas a larger transform is going to make a central diamond which is sort of flipped in on itself. For my purposes I'm wanting a smaller sphere. Come to think of it, resizing the wallpaper probably wasn't our best move. Because this is a sphere we probably do want to go for a wallpaper size that is square. So untick that aspect ratio and make it square. There's a couple of ways of zooming in with Apophysis. I find the one that is the best is to simply change the scale factor in the adjustment window. Doing it this way means that it's not going to take a hugely long time to render. At this point you can either change the gradient colours or leave them as they are. You can change gradient colours by sliding, going Control alt n to randomise, or even selecting a completely different gradient. Double clicking on the gradient randomises it as well. If you have gone Control alt n and you don't like what you see, you can always go back to the default by choosing Plan Calculate Values. You can double click quite a while trying to find a useful or appropriate gradient, but it is worth the effort. I'm going to pause and play around until something works. This gradient here is not too widely. Remember that you can invert the gradient and reverse it as well if you like. The inverted one looks worse than the regular one. 
I think it's time to stop playing because this looks reasonably okay. So the next step is to render. I usually render quite large so that I've got a high resolution image for other projects. I usually have my density set to a thousand with a filter radius. Once you're happy, you can go ahead and render the image. Rendering an image can take anything from 20 minutes to several hours, so it's a good idea to be patient while this process goes. Look towards the bottom of the render screen for an, air, for an idea of how long the render is going to take. While your image is rendering, you can continue working on the fractal and potentially generate other images that you like. If you haven't already saved the parameters, now would be an excellent time to do so. Simply go File, Save Parameters, choose a name, something like Diamond Woven Sphere. and click Save. If you're wanting to share the parameters of this fractal with a friend, what you can do is you can click on this sphere, go Control c go to your email program, type in a message, and simply hit Control v This will paste the parameters into an email. If the recipient of the email copies these and pastes them back into Apophysis, they'll be able to generate the image that you just created. This is an interesting way of backing up your parameters, just in case. Trust me, you don't want to lose parameters. I'm going to resize my image so that it's going to be suitable for a wallpaper. and carry on playing with it. I can easily remove that final transform by deleting it. However, I will need to rescale my image because it's now far too large. So let's take it back down to the 15 that it was. If you are going to be creating your sphere on a diamond background, you'll probably want to render the diamond background on its own. Notice that we can make it as small or as large as we want. You'll want to settle on a size that is reasonably small, but not too small so that it goes dark towards the edges. I'm also going to keep the gradient the same so that the colored sphere looks good on the background. So I'm going to save these parameters as well. You may recall that we still have our image rendering in the background and unfortunately there's nothing for it but to wait for that one to render and then we'll render the background as well. Our sphere is finally done rendering so now we can render the next image. I'm going to keep the settings the same. The only difference is that instead of having a square image I'm going to have one that's appropriate for a wallpaper. My fractals have now been rendered and saved as PNG images. The next step in the process is to combine both the background and the sphere into an attractive looking wallpaper. To do that I'm going to use GIMP which is a powerful editing program that is completely free and you can download it from GIMP.org. The first step will be to open both my PNG files. I saved them as PNG files so that they would be transparent backgrounds. Don't panic if when you open them they don't look like much. We're going to fix this very shortly. My diamond woven background is a little bit big so I'm going to just play with the zoom. So 
that you can see it easily. Oopsie. The first step is to use my layers palette, that's Control L if you don't see it, and add in a background. I'm going to paint the background black. So where's my bucket tool? I have black as the main color. And then I just move that up. And already that looks a lot better. If this front layer is quite dim, you can always duplicate it to make it more intense. And if you do choose to duplicate it, you may well want to merge down so that you're back to two layers, one black and one colored, which doesn't show up much. At this point I'm going to resize my image so it's suitable for a wallpaper and I'm going to use image scale and I normally make it 600 by 1080 and now I can increase my view again. Once I've got the background sorted I'm going to put the sphere in. So all I need to do for this is grab the sphere, copy it and paste it. This sphere is actually too large so I'm going to resize first and I'll probably resize a bit more later as well. So if I change the width to 1600, which is probably far too wide, scale, edit, copy, go to my wallpaper, edit, paste as, new layer. And we can see that I've got a really large sphere. To resize the sphere only, in the layers panel, go scale layer and play until it looks good. So if I change it to 1080, that's a reasonable compromise. One of the things I want to do is I'm wanting to put an outer glow on my sphere. And I'm also moving it over a little bit. You'll notice that at the moment my sphere is a square shape on my rectangle and I'm really wanting it to be the same size. So what I do is I go layer, and layer to image size, which resizes it quite nicely. There's a number of ways of a, applying a nice white glow. The first step is to select the sphere, and in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to magic wand and select the background, and I hold down shift, you'll notice little plus comes up. That's got the background selected. I'm going to make a new layer and this is going to be the layer for my white shadow. If I fill what I currently have selected, you'll see it's the outside and that's not what we want. What we're wanting to do is to get the inside so what we do is we go select and invert it. Now if I invert it, all that will be selected is the material of the sphere. And we're going to shift this layer down in a second. In fact, let's do that now. So if I was to color that in, that would be completely pointless. What I need to do is grow my selection and or feather it. So I'm going to try feathering it. At the moment it's 5 pixels. I'm going to bump that up to 100 and give it a moment to do its thing and then hopefully if I color it in you can see that shadow but it's horrible I need to grow the selection so let's grow it and I'm going to grow it by 50 now when I click on it we can see that I'm going to have a nice shadow at the edge there Unfortunately, at the moment, I have my entire thing white, which I don't want. So what I do is I go back to my clipboard layer, Control shift a unselects, 
and I'm going to reselect my sphere. I'm going to click on the white shadow. I'm going to hit the delete button. No, I'm not. I'm going to invert my selection first. It's a big important step. And then I hit delete. And that leaves me with a reasonable looking glow. If you're wanting to blur the glow a bit, that's not the world's worst idea. You just go filter, blur. I'll just move this over so you can see what that menu looks like. And I choose Gaussian Blur. The bigger the radius, the more blurred it's going to be. And say OK. And you can repeat or not as needed. So that's pretty much how to create a reasonable background. The only thing left to do would be to put a signature of some sort down the bottom. Once you're happy with how it looks, simply save it as a JPEG. If you are planning on editing it later, you want to save it as an XEF file, which will keep these layers. So I'm just going to save it as a JPEG, sign it, and it will be uploaded to Flickr in due course. To save to real easy in GIMP file, save as, and I can save by typing in the extension I want, which in this case is JPEG, because I'm not too fussed about keeping those layers, and say save. And in this version you have to export. In the older versions you can just save. So cancel out of there. File and export. Let's try that. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're going to put the file on your own website and you want it to be small, you can play with the quality. Lower quality, lower file size. I'm just going to keep it at 85%. And there you go. It's all saved and done. Hopefully you enjoyed the screencast. And um, I may or may not produce more. Fortunately, this one's a little bit quicker to render. So I'll be back.